All right, everyone. Welcome to another round of another round. Tonight, we are going to learn how to draw a punch. I thought, you, buddy. I, I thought we were discussing the episode two, Attack of the Clones. I'm oh, really not no. prepared. <laughs> yeah. We'll do that one maybe on the May the 4th. That might be a fun one to do. Yay! So tonight, um, you have your standard guest, uh, Scott Collins, Steve Jones, and myself. And everyone, got a beverage? Cheers. Scott? Scott, what do you got there? It looks like a cocktail of some kind. Actually, it's just iced tea. Oh, boring. Steve? Uh, you, very focus boring. On? I, you know, I Last used it my drink quota a couple weekends ago. <laughs> that is true. Jonesy has a classic Coke, and I am hydrating Gosh. with just a ton of water. Um, I had my doctor's appointment recently, and I was. They told you to hydrate some more? They told me to hydrate. <laughs> so, so I'm on it. So I'm definitely on it. So tonight there we're going to talk go. about how to draw a punch. Um, and we're going to do that by. Like that kind of punch? One. That's the one. That's one Gosh. of them for sure. Oh, <laughs> I, I love that one. Oh, that one's got so much movement in it. So let's take a look at that one. We're going to talk about how to get motion in the punch, how to have some direction and uh, some power in the punch and some tricks that you can use. And there's a couple of really good examples in there with uh, the direction of Batman's fist and then the opposing flow of their capes. Um, and then right. just how much uh, motion there is in, in both their bodies. So we're going to show a little bit of how to do that. So I'm going to, and we're also going to show different kinds of punches. Oh yeah. We're going to, we're going to go through a range. Like that's a good haymaker, but um, we've loaded up right. a couple of different kinds of punches and we're going to talk about the narrative use of each one of those kinds of punches. So I'm absolutely start drawing. And, I also uh, found this that was interesting. It's not all punches, but um, it kind of uh, simplifies the idea of the actions. Mm -hmm. hmm. I, I'm now immediately thinking of, let's see if I can hold it up. If I got it where I want it, can I hold it up? Where did it go? One of the thing I like about that, Scott, is it shows the, the silhouettes and the clarity yeah. of the punches or the action. Mm. And I know that Jones in animation, when he's chore when when we choreograph a scene animation, silhouettes are incredibly important. Sure, exactly. Think, yeah, that's a good. I, I thought I had here in front of me, um, and I and right by my desk, and I guess I don't. Is that in How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way? There's such that great example um, when John Buscema is talking about like either showing the beginning or the end of an action. You know, like right. and he actually draws his way, sort of animates his way you know, through a punch and you see either the huge wind up or the huge payoff is the, is the way to go. But Scott, can we briefly go back to the classic Frank Miller one? It's just so, I mean, of course it's, it's just so great because like all the force and line of action coming through Bruce Wayne's punch. Um, and then, you know, like just the arc of Superman's arm going along with it too, but then the Cape, you know, just paying off that whole thing. And then, the way the way uh, the way Bruce's cape is working, you know, gives us this sort of sense or feeling of of the windup. It's almost the equivalent of an in, in an animation storyboard, board, like someone drawing the little line with the arrow. You know, I was gonna say, yeah, the, he's using the cape there, uh, Batman's cape, to basically do almost that circular loop of a punchline that we would have drawn in classic comic books that would have showed you where it began somewhere behind him and all the way around to where it came around to the front. We know, and that reminds me, speaks to a thing I was just discussing with someone I hope to have, we have on as a guest soon is uh, Matthew Humphreys, who, uh, who Jeff and I are. That's lucky. a great, he's a great storyteller. Yeah. Lucky enough, we we're lucky enough to know him as humps, but, um, and, uh, I first worked with Matt on, um, on G.I. Joe Renegades, and now he's gone on to massively surpass me as a great director on DuckTales, and he's working on something at Nickelodeon right now and stuff. But he was talking about how important it is to, in animation with anything, a punch or not, is to show that arc, you know, yep. and that, and to be sort of thinking about arcs. And especially when you're doing a storyboard, it's really important to think about that arc of action because 
when things go overseas to be animated, they may just be very literal about all right. of your poses and your in-betweens. And so you really need to be sort of thinking about drawing that arc and, and line of action through where you're wanting that fist to go or, or anything to go, really. Absolutely. Let's see what Johnson's got going on here. Ooh. Speaking of an arc. All right. So while you guys were talking about that Frank Miller punch, I was uh, what I did is I roughed out. Um, Jeff, you can be honest. You could say while we were while while Scott and I were nattering away. I mean, I was going to say jibber jabber, but I think nattering is good too. Um, so to start, I drew the basically just the arrows of yep. the action, right? Like that's what this arrow is doing, and that what this arrow is doing, and then I started roughing in following that kind of line of motion if you can see it from the foot all the way up to the elbow and past the hand absolutely is that's the that's the line of that action and i'm just sort of fitting in my figure along that line in a classic uppercut pose you know simple shapes right Standard. oh jonesy how did you not have this i know i'm sorry well well played mark <laughs> solomon well played well, was, punch. well done, Mark. That's a good idea. <laughs> that would have been good. That would have been perfect. Mark, um, we're going to create the equivalent of an another round uh, no prize. And we're going to send that out to you. Or we just show up at your door drunk. Um, and so then uh, after I got him kind of roughed in, then I, then I drew in basically the arc of the flow of that action where the punch comes back from here and it sweeps in around and gave myself kind of a good – angle on what I think the the plane of that attack was. Yep. And then next, I'm going to fit the guy getting punched into this section. So you can watch it's me a, do that. Or you guys early beginning, show. absolutely. There you go. Just show some more punches. All right. So um, when I was grouping up different kinds of punches I was going to find, uh, this will start a little bit uh, quieter than uh, what we're jumping into with the Miller cover or the other stuff. But some of the other punches we find in classic comics, I found, um, are a lot more um, almost just posed, just to let you know that there's action in the book without necessarily something happening from the punch itself. Um, so like this classic Superman, he's punching, but nothing's really happening uh, necessarily in in the punch and of itself. Um, it's just, I'll let you know that, you know, Superman's in a cool pose, that kind of stuff. Um, but I mean, it still can have power. So let us know that Brainiac is a very punchable face. Well, right. I mean, that's part of the story of this one in that um, Brainiac's got a force field here or whatever else that's stopping Superman. But, you know, it is a punch. It is action and stuff going on. But we can even have really powerful ones like this Ross one where the punches are in and they're swinging. But technically with those two main guys that are punching each other, um, they aren't actually being affected by the punch. They're so strong and so titanic and so evenly matched kind of a thing. But there's um, great, that's a great, I wish we could do a draw over of this one because the, there's so many great opposing lines of action in this drawing, right? Like absolutely. I, I read it very much that Superman's leg is going straight back uh, and it's being blocked by his cape. But so there's just this really strong straight with just a little bit of curve line coming from the back of Superman's foot pushing right through in his arm. And then it's, you know, it's it's just glancing off Shazam, you know, which is why Shazam's not, you know, crushed under it or whatever. And then, right. so that's this really powerful left to right arc that we have. And then we've got this great, we have two great arcs really going on with the Shazam. Yeah, good X diagram. Exactly, where one is coming from, you know, say from Shazam's right fist arcing back with his left fist. And then the other, and then there's one just along Shazam's entire, um, you know, from the head to the back of his right foot, where it's just, so the oppositional energy, right, when you just break it down, it's just this, all these conflicting lines of sort of crashing into each other. And I think Ross is such a good realistic painter. I think people often don't give him enough credit for how good, like, if you just break his stuff down, it would work as a cartoon as well, you know. Oh, yeah, no, his layouts and stuff, especially even with this one, which is an across, actually a very complex situation, a complex panel yeah. with tons going on there. Um, but most of them are fairly clear and separate and still diagonal or exciting or uh, different things happening with them. Um, so, it, yeah, it works as a piece just beyond the, uh, well, his capability of being a painter. 
Yeah. All right. So again, in that same vein, I found this one. I thought of this one again. The, they're punching each other, but there's really not a whole lot going on here. We really haven't gotten to the action yet. Um, but these are important, I think, covers for a lot of uh, reasons to use them. Um, and well, it's good to be. Or can we go back to that one for? And I have a funny story to tell about the next yeah. one. But um, which I wonder if we can say on air. But um, uh, is that Ross Andrew or is that? Um, no, this is Buckler. Ah, uh, okay, Rich Buckler kind of doing. It. I mean, the thing about that one is it's a little bit of like it is. There is an editorial thing it ha it's having to satisfy too, right? Which right. is that basically they're saying, look. We can't be showing Superman or Shazam to be winning, right? So there had to be a sort of neutrality in the pose. Now, of course, we just saw Alex Ross brilliantly pulling off. Neither Superman or Shazam was winning in the previous one. It just looked like right. two titans going at each other. And Mr. Well, one of the important parts of this one, besides not either winning like this one, though, is that in this one, we get to see both their chest logos. We get to see them very clearly. And their faces as well, yeah. yeah. So it's so there's in some way, you know, some some degree of of more successful, you know, line of action stuff had to be kind of get was sort of given up for more uh, editorial or commercial considerations. Yeah, this one is is put together as a cover, whereas this one is a panel inside the book, mm. um, and may not play just as well as a cover in of itself. It's just a great panel. Well, I think you guys hit on a really important thing that I wanted to to talk about a little bit. Is that we uh, we usually do, Jeff? If, if <laughs> you're pretty you're pretty good at it. Um, we should do a show or something. But anyway, like the, hey. the the different kinds of punches, all and the way you choreograph a scene has a different narrative purpose, right? Like for the Rich Butler one, it's the cover. You're showing these two characters are evenly matched, and we want to see their logo. So that's why you chose those kind of like not roundhouse punches, not like they're, right. they're pretty straightforward. Whereas um, in the one with uh, Shazam and, and soups there, the Alex Ross one, like they're the center and the eye is the X composition leads your eye right to the middle, but we see all this other stuff going on behind them. But like both those guys are getting a good shot in, right? Like yeah. th those are a well-delivered, like that's a, that's a bone crusher of an uppercut rib shot. Yep. So I think that that's that's telling the story of these guys are evenly matched, but also good at what they do. They're really hammering each other. Oh yeah, no, you can feel the impact, no doubt. Some might even say it's hammer time. In a um, similar context for the cover uh, scenario, you've got this one, right? Oh, on no. by somebody <laughs> you know, I think. <laughs> right. That's that's by uh, Yep. Janssen? I, yeah. think he's a, I think he's a Swedish or Scandinavian right. artist. Um, um, yeah, and like, so the Captain Marvel one, the the guy in green, like, his form is much better, just, right? Like, his hand... <coughs> Captain up, like, Atlas! <coughs> uh, right, Captain Atlas. Um, <laughs> it's been a long time. And like, and Wonder Man's, his hand's kind of high up, but like, it just, I wanted to see his face. See, see, and that's good. part of the trick. This is a cover. You have to do those kind of yeah. things. I mean, just a, as a not apropos of, a, but this cover always makes me laugh because I think Jeff made an appearance at a comic book convention not long after this, and I think the extremely talented Moose Bauman before, like, did like a really cool sort of neon recoloring of this cover, and it was used as, as Jeff's like when you appear at a show, like the thing. Oh yeah, Scott, the backdrop. Oh yeah. Yeah, the, the thing Scott has behind him right now, like this was Jeff's backdrop at that show. Right. Moose did this really nice job. It was really like fluorescent -y kind of popping. And then I believe there was a late night over at Jeff's house where it may or may not be that certain things had been ingested. All right, and, that's enough. And I feel like I just spent hours and hours staring <laughs> at this thing. Where it's like, it's so three-dimensional, but yeah. it, I mean, it is. It, and look, Jeff has some great line of actions in there. Like, the curve, you know, like that line of energy from Wendy's uh, right elbow to his left is just a great, you know, um, line of action there. And Atlas is, it's the same thing. Like both the the rear elbow to the front fist and both Atlas and Simon Williams' arms is terrific. And then Jeff's got Atlas's, you know, he's, he has another 
great contrasty X composition, Atlas's head to his left foot arcing in toward 1D. Mm -hmm. And then 1D's, we can't see it, but from 1D's head to the back of his leg is another great arc. So it's just like, Absolutely. it's like, it's an X, ver it's two X's making, you know, uh, running into each other. Lots well, that's of one of the things tension. to... Yeah, to remember when you're drawing the punch is like your eye, if you're gonna if your arms or hands are if your character's gonna cross over, your eye is always drawn to an X shape on a page. It just you can't help it. Your the X always does mark the spot. You can't help but be drawn to that place on the page. So you should use that to your advantage and, and draw like if that's where you want the eye to go, right there between the two of them, then that's I mean it's kind of rudimentary the composition, but that's what I did. But I think in many ways, when broken down, all, I mean, I guess you're meaning rudimentary in a negative way, but. I mean, no, it's just sort of, it's super basic. It's like, it's the, it's rule number one, which I, I don't know many of them. Like I, maybe up to rule three. And there's, not, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the basics. <laughs> yeah. They're because they work. Yeah, they two work really half, well. Two and a half more rules than I, I have. <laughs> yeah. There's so many rules. All right. In a similar fashion, it's another cover. Um, again, people are punching and doing things, but there's not a whole lot of impact necessarily yet. The characters aren't being affected. Right. <clears throat> but a nice cover, nice illustration, nice punch. You really uh, feel the action going on and the dichotomy with uh, Orion, who's angry and doing the punching versus uh, Miracle, who's smiling, getting away from it, escaping, you might say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All that sort of thing. Well but. All right, let's, now we'll start moving on. Now we'll start getting into um, punches that have a little more uh, pizzazz going on with them. Is that pure Klaus Jansen? I think it's Frank Miller and Klaus together, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. I think that might just be Klaus, but maybe not. Yeah, I'm not sure either. That, that, uh, some of it does seem like Frank where it's not just Klaus, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I don't even, know where you pulled it from. I think, Jeff, you pulled this one. Yeah, yeah, I just pulled it off the internet. So, but anyway, though, like the this, even the, she's doing the X, even she's doing a, sort of a couple back fist in there, a, you know, palm strike back fist. Like she's definitely getting that that X compositional trick where you're. Yes, you're although right this one I face. thought was interesting because she's the center of the X. That's mm -hmm. why I put it with the covers and stuff is that this is almost like a cover kind of pose. Right. Where she's really showing off who she is. You get to see her insignia, you get to see her face yet she's still doing action, and yet she's still doing the X action almost by herself. Um, it's a great shot. It's almost like those other shots you see later on where Captain Nurk is kicking two or three people at once and doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that, you know, he's the center of the action, but yet you can see all that stuff going on. All right. Um, a couple more, actually, that I found that I thought were funny uh, punches before we get full-on action stuff going on. So then I, I threw in a couple of these where the punches are there and they're supposed to be showing something, but at the same time, um, it's the dichotomy of the situation where here Spider Man's punching like crazy, but he can't do anything to Superman. So, right, right. Punches you, can't, are... you can't hurt Superman, silly Spider Man. Right. Lovely Ross Andrew drawings. Yeah. Yeah, they're really uh, good. Similar to that, uh, here's a classic Superman where he's punching, and that's the joke of the covers that he's punching this child uh, abuse. Here, kid, whatever. <laughs> Is it just, uh, just Superman punching a child? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess his name is Captain Incredible, something like that, but whatever. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, there is a use to this uh, kind of punch and this kind of action situation as well. Obviously, I don't think it's used that much, but there are times when it's been used where, you know, Hulk might be punching something that can't be stopped or, well, guess, or like he's punching Juggernaut and it can't be stopped, all those well, things. Well, and I guess similar to the one we just watched, right, it's, there's something interesting that w when you see this big arc or line of action from one character and then there's just a simple, not very arced, you know, like it, it, it's, it's showing how there's just no effect, you know, because the line of, of Captain Incredible is just so, you know, just slightly bowed forward as it, you know, like it's just, it's just about, just like Superman was in the previous one with Spider-Man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's convex to the action versus uh, exactly. the other way around, showing again that there's no action or no real impact going on here. They even put the brick wall behind him to also make sure we're deadening the effect so we know that there's yeah. a solid wall of something that's not being affected. He is not moving. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a really good touch. Well, that's one of the things too that I know you guys are going to show, but like one of the things I always found that gives a punch um, some power 
is showing it destroying either having a guy being knocked far away or mm. in the case of that brick wall where he's not being knocked it shows that it doesn't have any power or he's unaffected by it but like destroying a brick wall destroying a car having a punch blow through things absolutely we're going to get to those yeah yeah no, i think so, something that jeff's always done really great in his work is that he got all those great arcs of action from john Buscema, but then i think his love of otomo led him to be like but because Buscema might th he, Buscema might throw in some destroyed you know scenery you know like machinery or some different stuff but he I'd say, you know, when Yusema did, he obviously is a master and incredible, but when he did a lot of superhero stuff, he, he didn't do that thing that Jeff, I think, probably learned from Otomo so well, where it's like, okay, well, look, if Wonder Man's beating the hell out of Vision, let's actually throw him through a car and yeah. show actual engine parts and yep. show bricks and, sh you know, like, you know, Jeff's essentially like doing the equivalent of, if you were to draw someone being disemboweled and Jeff actually drew all the organs, <laughs> just, doing, just doing the equivalent of that to the environment. You know? well, Wait, is this found, a Berserk comic? Yeah. I always <laughs> found that one of the things that made the the action or the, the, the fantastical qualities of a story more believable is if you showed some real world effect. Like if... Um, if so, if like if Vision is getting thrown through a wall, then like making that wall look believable, and that's definitely an Atomo thing. That's definitely a thing I got from Akira. Is like, oh, look how destruction can be beautiful. Right. Is it? You then you have to learn how that wall is put together, like bricks, rebar, like masonry, like how it all works. Like that's and if you break it, if you destroy it believably, then it makes the punch more believable. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, um, there were even you could point back to. Um, history of stuff in um, American comics where the Silver Age books that we were first looking at, um, you know, when somebody did break a wall or something happened back here, quite often, honestly, the walls look like they're made out of cardboard mm. or some sort of, you know, TV prop that was cut out in effect to break out of that wall or whatnot. But later on, you'd get to the Kirby pages or different stuff like that. And not only would he have stuff in the walls, um, I don't know if it was a direct point of his or not to uh, make it again, different Marvel versus DC kind of thing. But remember it was a huge thing for the longest time that it became so cool that thing would put his hand into the wall and pull out a pipe. Yeah. So he knew <laughs> that there was stuff in these walls and he could actually use it um, in the battles that he was doing. Yeah. Talking yeah. about Kirby. I remember one of the, the panels that affected me a lot as a kid is at one point Thor throws his hammer basically through um, a semi truck. Yeah, and then knocks the engine out. Yeah, so like it's all the engine and the pieces and the and the the frayed metal and and all. It's I just thought like, oh my god, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. The the engine got knocked out. Like it just <laughs> felt, it felt so real. Yeah, super cool stuff. Now, Jeff, on your the picture that you're drawing, you also uh, if you bring it down just a little bit, there's an arc that you're creating with the guy being kicked, uh, knocked in the head. There's an arc for his head now. There's another ellipse being created by the shape and the uh the where it's tilted back now yeah mm -hmm. well, like a vertical one because you almost drew the line of how he's spinning backward right he's 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 following this line of motion but this this arc here is matching this arc here and so this x even though he's being impacted here the arcs intersect Right. And so, right. But do you see how the uh, the your forehead of your guy is getting punched? The forehead, the top of his head, to his jaw, mm -hmm. is creating another X line. Oh, no, this not guy? that guy. The other guy getting punched. This one. The, from the top of his head to his chin. That right. one. That's oh, creating yeah. another arc that way. Oh, right. Yeah. But, but that arc can, kind of connects to the the other one too. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Well, it, it's interesting because it kind of like in those oppositional ones when no one's winning, you've got an X, but the X's are sort of in conflict. And what happens here when there's a transfer of energy and one person's kind of winning is that you kind of have some, there's a moment of parallelness or crossover. And then this guy's arc is, you know, is continuing from the initial punch. You know, it's like this would, this would look less like an X and more like a collapsed H. You know, where the two sides of the H kind of collide sure. into each other, you know. Since we're talking about transfer of power, now we're starting to get into things where even in the old days, they would have had something happening, at least from the punch. Right. It's a great, great Infantino. So, yeah, super classic shot here. Right. Um, but having an effect. 
having well, a, a, a dramatic effect. Great, great arc of Flash's punch, right? But then from Flash's head to his knee is a great little opposing arc that creates an X. And then the fact that his leg is pressing down more, you know, like creates that oppositional energy. And then like Jeff's thing, because reverse Flash is winning or is losing, you know, his line kind of comes out of, of that one. It's less oppositional. You know? Right. All right. So... Again, we're starting with stuff that's a little older and they're, they're starting to show some um, effects of the, the violence or the action in this stuff. But remember, a lot of these books were held back during its day. Maybe not the spirit. This looks really old for Golden Age, but um, those Silver Age books were, were very uh, reined in as far as what they could show and what they couldn't show. Mm. Uh, but now we get a beautiful Jose Garcia Lopez. Oh yeah, look at that. And I really like this one because it has two punches on it and they're different kind of punches. Um, ultimately, both of them neither having an effect, but yet with the Hulk's pose, we still see the whole follow through of his punch. Yeah, exactly. It's You get the sense that it would have completely destroyed a building, all the weight that's going from his heel. Right. You know, and then, and then the even the weight coming off the foot, so there's like a little mini X there. And then all the weight coming from the back of his heel all the way to the to the fist. And there's an, another nice little arc with the Hulk thing there, kind of like Jeff's thing with Wonder Man, where there's another arc from the the left arm that's back going through the shoulders. You know, and like the cape on the Frank Miller one, here he's using Batman's cape to show where Batman was. Exactly. So that Batman has a great little line from the tip of his cape down to his head. You know, and then. And then another one, like from his head down through the rest of his body, he's he almost looks like a, a three, you know, in terms of the two lines of energy that are culminating in his head. You know. Yep, absolutely. You're very welcome, Eric. This is why we're doing this. Yeah, one of the things I think um, drawing, Steve and I have both done animation and comics, and one of the things that's great about comics is that you can hint at where someone was, but with a cape or a scarf or you know a loose shirt or something, um, or or long hair, without drawing the entire, you know, action. Although I'm posing it out all the way from the beginning without drawing all those poses, and right. I really I, lo I love that. And capes are great for that. I did when I created Solitaire. That's one of the reasons I gave him a long scarf. That's right. Yeah. It wasn't just to be jaunty. And it wasn't just to be jaunty. And when I did Way, Way of the Rat with Boone, I gave him um, a flowing sash for the same the same reason. It's like okay, oh, so yeah. now we know where he's been, and we can that way I can only I only need to draw where he's going. Now I'm forgetting. Absolutely. Did you ever do you ever have an opportunity to have Boone do some sash fighting? I never did. Um, I have to imagine I, you were planning to at some point. Though. I was. <laughs> I did have. I did have some plans. I had a lot of plans for Boone. All right, so keep moving along. We got a lot of pictures to get through. Sure. Um, we got this cat is... punching here. This is a you know obviously a real classic one. And on the cover, you got to have some of that action. But this is Golden Age, so this is before any sort of comics code or whatnot. Also, just really worth mentioning too, just the awesomeness of the fact that you know America was not in the war at the time that Kirby right. and Simon wrote this. So this was definitely a you know a provocative statement to say, hey, um, so God bless America and God bless Jack Kirby. And apparently they got hate mail and even called in threats and all sorts of stuff at the time. Um, well, yeah, because sadly there was people that were sympathetic to uh, national socialism in the United States at that time. That's Absolutely. Crazy. One of the things I wanted to, I was going to point out, Scott, about the older um, action shots is they tend to be more full body and also more straight on um, eye level horizon line. Like right. There's not a ton of exaggeration when it comes to angle or perspective. No, uh, but they, they use all the other tricks that they can, like the mm -hmm. X line or those different kind of things uh, that we were just mentioning um, to tell the tale. But um, yeah, they didn't, I don't think it was one of those things where either they had the time or the inclination to really play around with extra shots because, you know, they would have to do a whole story, remember, in like, you know, eight pages or whatever yeah. they were left with. And also the standards of the time where you showed a lot more, right? You didn't do it. There wasn't, we would call it cutting now, yeah. but like there was not a lot of cut ins. There was not a lot of really tight close ups of the action. And that was just not the, it was, it was sort of not the, the style at the time. Wait, can we stick, can we stay on that last one? Uh, yeah. Scott? I mean, I, I, 
A, I just think Ditko is great to bring in because he's not someone that people generally think of like, oh, let's talk about the great action artist Steve Ditko. But he, I mean, I love Ditko's lines of actions. His stuff is a little bit more awkward, but that's, a, you know, but it's still really always graphically interesting. But I always, I mean, ever since I was a little kid, I've loved that Spidey versus Electro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Combination a, shot. There. I mean, a, I love the, the lighting on Spidey coming off, you know, the electricity and stuff. And I've always, it always seemed like Electro was kind of like snapping his fingers to make the electric, right. electricity or something like that. But that being said, you still have good conflicting X's in there, you know. Absolutely. And I love the the motion and everything on the Mysterio one. Actually, if I had to pick between the two, I think I like the Mysterio one a little bit better. But uh, no, they're both great. really cool shots. It's really great. All right. So moving along, Johnson was mentioning a lot of intercuts. This perfectly brings in this next page where Kirby took the time yeah. to literally do a whole nine panel grid of uh, nothing but action shots in this oh, fight sequence. God, I remember that. The bat shot. Oh, it's so good. The bat <laughs> shot, right. Because that's the same. That's, that's, that's like the camera is behind a football punter as he's like arcing <laughs> yep. his foot back, getting ready to you know deliver the blow. Absolutely. And then I think I picked this one, and it's funny because we were uh, Jeff and I. I think we're loading some of the same pictures, but it's still worth it to have this close up of one of the panels. Yeah, I love that one. It's so good, just a great shot. Well, I mean, the foot sweep one on the previous page too. I just think is so great. The arc of Batroc staying in cap, arcing back over to the panel four. Yeah, yeah, oh, so it's it's tremendous. It's tremendous. Well, I think one of the most important things to do when you're drawing action or even studying it in this way is to follow the the through lines, to, to, to trace the, the moments. Like, where does the motion come from? And like, and when you're drawing it, it's just do your, just draw your sweeps, you know, just let the, let the lines flow and let, um, let the pencil do the work for you and then fit the figure around it. The trouble from, as an artist who once shared a studio uh, with both you guys, what's difficult when you're working in a studio with Jeff and, and uh, is that you have to sort of suffer a lot of punching from Jeff very often. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to get the feel for it. Yeah. As he's working, you know, like a lot of artists will talk about like, Oh, if they're drawing something sad, they make a sad face. If they're drawing right. something angry, they make an, an angry face. But Jeff would really like to just punch his coworkers. Um, yeah. I believe in all the systems. <laughs> all right, Johnson, you're working on another one? Yeah, so now I'm just going to have so I'm, uh, uh, just more of a straight-on shot mm. or a closer shot for he's, the guy is punching, and then we're going to have in the, in the background and in the foreground, we're going to have the person being hit. So this line of action coming uh, this way, yes, yes. and this guy is going to be going that way. Oh, nice. For a second, I thought you were going to have a guy dodging. Oh, I, I mean, I could do that. That would just be this. Right, like you yeah. wanted to have a guy dodge, and then you and throw his cape or something up there. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. In fact, oh. that reminds me of I was going to say this for later in the batch, but it's always good to again check reality. Wow, oh, yeah. God, look at that! Oh, look at that so great good. action shot, and that's not easy with the live action shot. A lot of them can be very stiff, but that's oh, right. I mean, so awesome. The weight trip, all the um, I should know who the front the guy throwing the punches, but I don't. Um, I want to say it's Joe Frazier, but um, he, right, his weight is on his front leg. You can see all the mus muscular tension in his quadricep, but the line of action is coming from the back leg, right? Like, but he's completed the weight transfer. There's yep. no like the the back leg is what drove that punch, but because he's off balance from missing Ali, you know, there's almost no weight on the back leg, and his arm has completed that arc, and then just. But the line of action of Muhammad Ali is just insane. I mean, from his his left leg as he dodges <laughs> back, and then his and I mean he's he is at a forty five degree angle to the ground, and then right. it's just his and his arms, everything is in line with it, and then it's just his back leg. He's using his back leg like a kickstand. You know? <laughs> the only thing missing from this comic panel is a giant whoosh. Exactly. Yeah, but you could very easily just yeah, draw but you that could line. easily draw in that 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 swing and a miss, right? Like oh yeah. Peerless loser has a great comment. Yes, crazy how Ali is more visually dominant in a dodge than the opponent is in his punch. 
I mean, Absolutely. Clearly, clearly Ali held his action and used uh, dodge for his action in this uh, D&D round. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, since we're on this topic, I was going to save this one for at the end because this is one of my favorites. And I think this is, uh, Jeff said that this is one of his favorite punches ever. But we're already 35 minutes in, so I want to make sure we get this in before, before we end the show. And I'll bet you this is one of Steve's favorite punches ever as well. Are we ready? Yeah, mm -hmm. I know what it is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, look such at that. a good punch. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow. and this one's got everything we've been talking about, the the crossing lines of action, the shifting of weight, the, uh, but also it has an extra element of knocking his glasses yeah, off. Yeah, runaway, pro <laughs> runaway props. Yeah. I hope, I don't, I mean, I was remiss in uploading stuff this week. Sorry, guys. So Sorry. No worries, no worries. I, I would have, in, ter in terms of runaway impact, I mean, Kirby obviously started it all, but I feel like Sal Buscema is probably the, fly the master of the flying broken tooth. Oh, um, yeah. But well, luckily, we have a few of those. This, is, so, in this, this is so, again, like Paul Smith is someone that you that people probably don't think of as his action because his quiet stuff is so good, his acting is so good, his composition. There's such an elegance to Paul Smith's stuff, but that's a remarkable line of <laughs> action and all of that stuff. I mean, just Slim's, Scott Slim Summers is making an X himself there. Ah, oh, boy, that's beautiful. We gotta, yeah. do, we, guys. We gotta do Paul Smith. We gotta do a small Paul Smith X Men issue really soon. Oh, absolutely, sure, okay. absolutely, freaking lutely. All right, since I'm, I'm having to start to cherry pick now because we're gonna start okay. running out of time. We're gonna get the Sal. We got some other people, John Romita Jr., all sorts of great stuff. But since we're going with famous ones, oh uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> the one punch heard around the world. Yeah, I mean, well, I wonder, I wonder. I'm at, I imagine it might be out there, but well, I wonder what Keith Giffen's um, yes, well played, Eric Snyder. Um, yep, yep. What Keith Giffen's layout for this one was, because this is back during that era where Keith was doing all those thumbnails, and I, I bet you this is pretty close to it. I mean, the the, the top panel to me seems a little more like Kevin having fun with the 3D and whatnot effect of it. I don't know if. Um, if Keith would have done that, I mean, maybe Murphy in a, more of a Kirby fashion, but um, I think those last two, the middle panel and the bottom panel are very much uh, what Keith probably laid out for him because mm. the silliness of those feet on Gardner's feet at the last panel, <laughs> all that kind of stuff is just uh, brilliant storytelling. But um, the one thing we didn't put in here, which we should have, which part of this whole thing, one of the reasons why this page is so good is because, and I read this somewhere too, that people talk about the fact that, you know, there was buildup of pages and pages and pages before this of Gardner being a jerk yeah. and really getting on everybody's nerves, including probably the reader's nerves. Right. So that when this did come in, it was a huge payoff. Yeah. Yeah. But the funny thing about it, looking at it now compared to everything else we've seen is it's, it's just a fist with some action lines there, you know, there's no, I mean, it's yep. a very, very succinct straight line of action and it's so important that it's going right to left to just show that it's stopping guy in his tracks, you know? Um, yep. I think they had kept that straight from the previous pages that Guy Gardner had been on the left-hand side. And here, because of uh, McGuire being such a facially expressive uh, expressive artist, half of that punch, like you're saying, Steve, half of that uh, punch of being told of it is just Gardner's face being punched, right. they have that reaction to his face. Jeff, I think there's something we can very safely say about this page and this punch. Uh, that it, it, inspired, it inspired me? I, well, I think that's definitely true, but I think we can really say that Kevin Kevin really McGuire this one. He really McGuire the shit out of that one, that's for sure. <laughs> now, one thing that hasn't been happening in most of these punches yet that is one of the other uh, pieces I want to get to um, is in this one and some other Ooh. ones, one of the other ways that you can really get action, to my mind, and I've read and heard about as well, um, out of these poses beyond the X shapes and crossings and the ellipses and the power which this one also has too is the separation between the two people getting punched yeah is that a, the more is that space a... that you put between them in that punch shows that the punch is even bigger mm. is that a cubert actually no i think that's um jim chung yes oh okay yeah. I, like, on her face it looks like a chung face I agree. I mean, that's what I, that was my first guess was it was uh, Jim Chung. I, I apologize you if I'm saying your last name back in the properly, cell. but if, um, but if, uh, but it, there's a hint of a Adam Kubert in it, I kind of feel like too. 
on um, the Thanos figure and whatnot, yes, I feel like there is a feel of some Adam Cuber, especially Thanos's mouth or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Exa yeah, exactly. And the effects, but I mean, it's you know, wow, Jimmy is so talented. That's really good. He's remarkable. In a similar fashion to the space on that one and the power of that punch, classic Ooh. Gil Kane. Oh yeah, look at that all the way. I mean, that Adam's punch is he looks like a baseball pitch pitcher. Yep, right. Like, Very much. I mean, it wouldn't even surprise me if he actually looked at a photo, you know, of a freeze frame of a of a baseball. Absolutely, picture. absolutely. I think he he would have for something like that. And I know Adam's smaller in here, but still, there's a giant separation between Adam, his punch. There's that whole special effect, like a Gil Kane special effect there of the punch. Yeah. And then, which they didn't even cover with the sound effect, what they would, you know, what you think that they would do. And then Hal being punched, you know, way in the foreground toward us. Right from which gives the, it that much more, you know, velocity. Yeah, there's an arc from uh, Hal's left foot all the way through his head, and then an, and then an opposing arc through the shoulder, you know, from the shoulders across to the other arm. Absolutely. But, but this speaks to your thing too, Scott, about the distance. You know. Yep. Now you can have power in the punch, like this one, um, when the characters are close together. This is another one of my favorites when I was a kid. This this really impacted me. Pardon for the pun. Um, is is this from? Uh, is this from Guardian's first appearance, or is yep. this from okay? Um, so Weapon Alpha here. Yeah, X Men One Hundred Nine, I think, or something, and not. Yep, um, that's and, right. Okay, not from Alpha Flight but when or when Alpha Flight uh, takes on all of the X Men. This is from the. And I agree with this guy. For some reason, I would still say that ultimately Gil Kane is underrated. Um, Absolutely. But I think a lot enough people do uh, uh, appreciate him, but yeah, I think he, he needs a little more. I learned how to draw a lot from Gil Kane. I had the uh, a small Absolutely. trade paperback of Starhawks when I was a kid, and I studied everything in there. And he has those wild swings where, where it's bad form, but both arms are flailing and his hips are completely ratcheted in a, like a one, almost a 180. Well, there's there, there's a really there's a book the good drawing book out there called Force. We'll have to talk about it sometime on there. But what's fun about this one is it's less X-y and it's more just like a giant like silhouette of power and energy going, you know, sort of from yeah, that, it's just the, everything's going in the same direction, kind of. Yeah, that, that back left hand from you know uh, of Guardian is just pushing through, and uh, well, you can split the there, there there is. There is that plus sign, that X sign, right where Wolverine's eye meets the fist and his mouth and his own hand. It's yes, almost like a cross. Yeah, your eye goes yeah. right, right to that spot, and you can't. Yep. And it stops right there. You can't really help yourself. Well, and that's one of the other uh, punches that I was finding as I was going through all of these to try and organize them a little bit. Is that there are the punches that still have a lot of impact, and yet they stop. Mm -hmm. There is mm. a there's a definite target in this whole thing a lot of the punches Actually, we're looking at are, are they the full arc of the punch passes through and around right. and passes the target person these some of these are just they only hit the target you know that yeah that's really interesting and i was thinking about i didn't have a chance to pull it out but there's a great daredevil john Romita jr punch uh somewhere during that run of his but right that one's fascinating because it's definitely a great, there's an enormous amount of power from it, but it is completely stopping. Yep. You know, like, um, maybe it's because the line of, um, of, of abomination, it just, it's creating an arc. They're, they're not really crossing over. They're meeting. You know what I mean? Well, like, all the zap lines are pointing to it, but yes, you're right. I mean, his arm going from one arm to his head around to the other arm is creating a U fashion that's stopping. It's cradling the impact. Right. right, and it's and there's a tiny twinning effect that's going on there too, where it's. But I mean, but I think that is actually probably what Ramit is going for, essentially. Like, yep. and and maybe it's just that he's he's just completely stopping the abomination in his tracks. Um, and yes, Bill, I think this is uh, John Ramita with Klaus. Emil Blonsky. <laughs> Emil Blonsky, but there is a there is a power to this, just like the. The punch we were looking at versus Guy Gardner. Agreed. There is an impact to this kind of a punch and how this has a reaction to it. It's a little more street level to me, um, and thinking about it. But you know, here's another one that Jeff found. Um, oh, yeah. Again, has great impact, but it, it just stops stopped. right there. Yep. Well, and we found a few of these. Well, you know, it's interesting too. I think these are all working and having this effect because they're it's actually perpendicular, right? Right. Like, yeah. 
there's no there's no x's uh there's no there's no opposing x's that create some level of equality or one x kind of taking over another x like in jeff's first drawing you know um that creates another arc when you have all this energy and then in all these examples we've just shown it's you know it's just it's a 90 degree angle and so yeah. it just um which is, which is creates an interesting effect. I mean, this shot, it's also just such a great cartoon drawing. Um, right. But the fact that you don't have um, Dread, Dread's not caving. I mean, Dread is caving in, but he's not curving back as he caves in. You know, I just- it's not, did, let's, let's show, so there's this one, and I think, let me jump ahead. I don't know, there's this one. This one? Yeah, exactly. Holy cow. He just right, where he right does, it does, it does go through. It does, yeah. Well, because it, it does go through, but it, uh, a lot of the action is still stopped. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But all right, not just the fist breaking through, but there is some curve to the the figure that's getting his head punched through. He's yes, he is being knocked back, right? Yeah. And I get, and I guess what Bisley's kind of doing in the previous one is it's showing that on the one level, you know, yes, Batman is completely smashing the judge's face, but the fact that the judge isn't retreating or bending, he's getting his face smooshed a bit, kind of still implies some strength there you know? and also that reveals a lot about the the unwavering quality of judges the judge's character judge exactly. judge's character right i think so the the whole point of the the book i wrote how to draw fight scenes was you mean this one part yeah that's one of the things is available that, from jeffjohnson.com <laughs> i think actually i went to i was going to link to it today um but there there's no more available on amazon they're all gone so if you don't have one you can't get one Oh no! Yeah. And I'm, I'm not selling. But it's got you all this great info. Yeah, well, luckily I'm preparing a um, updated version of it now, which will probably be available on Kickstarter someday. Mm. Woohoo! Yeah, and, and I'm what adding a lot sweetness. more. <laughs> yeah. So, but one of the things that um, when you're drawing action, right? Whether it's kung fu action, a haymaker, a kick, um, or even gunfire, right? That reveals a lot about the character. You know, and Judge Dredd oh, yeah, absolutely. just taking it, not moving. That right. shows a lot about who that guy is. Yeah, absolutely. he's not backing up. Which Bisley intimately understands, you know. Yeah. All right, some other ones where we stopped. This one stops. It's an that, interesting choice here when you turn the chest. Is that Jerry Ordway? Yeah. Yes, it is. No, well, look, there, there, there's a pretty complete transfer of energy there, right? Like, I think... You know, not that I'm going to tell Jerry Ordway his business because he's a hero, but but I sort of feel like if Jerry could have, I think it would have been more effective if Jerry could have tilted up that right arm mm -hmm. or the, the right elbow so that it was in line, kind of like Jeff's Wonder Man pose. I think it would have made this, it would have made the punch more powerful. You know what I mean? Like the fact that the right elbow is a little bit down. You know what I mean? Like take some of the energy out of that pose. But other than that, I think it's great. And the transfer is great. No, it's great. But he's definitely going for something else there. I'm not sure what, you know, the next panel was or the previous panel or how uh, Jerry was playing with it. But he's definitely making a choice there to try and stop that action or just transfer it from that dead fist that's directly facing us then right. toward mm -hmm. the other guy who's uh, spitting something out of his mouth. Hey, it looks like Black Ninja's got your book, uh, uh, Jeff. Oh, cool. I'm, I'm glad you've got one. Yay. All right, so again, these. Uh, oh, this one didn't come up well. Let's move. Oh on. yeah, it didn't. It's not. That's not. Anything. Here's Ooh. another one with a target. Titan is being kind of mean here. Is that Busema <laughs> or Ron Friends? I think it's Busema. Just inked by. Yes, I think it's Ron. Yeah, that's great though. I mean, what's really great about this one too is the dimensionality, right? Like, like Titania is coming out from us, so the foreshortening on that front leg is is really great, um, and all the weight. And then it's interesting what he's done with the line of action of her punch because now he's, you know, the the energy coming from the back of Titania's foot, which we can't see, which flows right into the punch, along with that arc, just makes it almost like a giant vanishing point right into Thor's breadbasket. Yeah. <laughs> and that great shape of his cape, where he's where clearly he's getting buckled over, and we see where his head used to be. No. Yep. And that that's such a well drawn, subtle cape because right there, there's a little bit of. The, you know, like, yep. There's a little bit of like a oh, you know, like, like wait, <laughs> right. is it is it flowing up? Is it flowing down? You know, like it's it's just caught a little unexpected air. 
Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in a Ooh. similar vein, is this this is John too? Yeah. yeah. But again, but this guy, this guy punching here, Jeff. I, I don't know. I that can't looks remember. Like a cap hand a little bit, but um, but the glove seems wrong. Good point. But I think, but this guy again, because the arc of his back is going backwards, you know, this guy's being stopped, but he's that might be a Wolverine shot. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, it could be. Let's, let's yeah. hope he's not popping his claws. Um, <laughs> no, thankfully but, not. You know, and the hat. That I I mean you could have even tilted the hat forward a little bit more and moved it a little bit closer to the to the word to the word balloon. balloon. Yeah, that would have showed that his face had been uh, a little bit more to the left. <laughs> right, previous, previous, yeah, previous <laughs> been a little bit. It's like someone losing his shoe when he gets knocked. Right. Uh, what else we got here? This one also is a dead end. Uh, Mike's, Mike's, Mike's punching to a just a stop. No, right. but 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 again, but in this case, like. The whole arc of the background goes along with. I apologize for not knowing what. Absolutely, this is Zach. Which member of the Wrecking Crew is this? I think that's Crowbar. No, that's not Crowbar. No, that's Pile Driver. No. Uh, I'm I'm uh, ashamed um, of myself for not remembering the names of the Wrecking Crew. Stu <laughs> by them. He's the one who runs over everything. But he, you know, like there's a whole, you know, just the, there's a caving in line of action on the background that's getting destroyed coming along mm -hmm. with the guy's head and his whole body. You know, yep. Great arc from She-Hulk. Is that from Secret Wars? Yeah, uh, it looks like remember. it. Yeah. It looks like it. The, the 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 style and the inking and everything at the time looks like it's that thing. But clearly we need to we need to work on our um footnotes. Uh, <laughs> our bibliography. Exactly. Yeah. Here's another Ooh. nice one. Ouch, that's Busama. Yeah. You still always had a fascinating Hulk, I thought. And in this one, it almost does have that still the X arc, even though the action is being stopped. Hulk's uh, tilt of his head and everything is creating that other angle. And since things punch is coming downward, um, it is helping to create that X thing. But it is just meeting in the middle of this panel. And yeah, that's where the conclusion is. It's a rock. It's All a right, rock. now let's move to the ones with a little more momentum and movement to them. Interesting. Smooth oh, Mr. Dave is here. Yeah. He's got, he has such graceful figures. Um, yeah, that's a great sweep. And that back. is a difference that's, that's noted, Steve, I think, to me, with with a lot of different people or the, the kinds of punches and whatnot that they choose or just the decade and whatnot that they were brought in. Everybody talks about Kirby stuff being so powerful, and yet for most of it, it's not really violent per se. It's still just wonderfully powerful action. I think this also fills, uh, fits into that, and Davis, I think, leans toward that as well. So it's not really violent. Um, it's just more pretty in its action, so you know what's going on, and there's impact, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily violent or gross. Chris Carter, you revealed that you came into this episode late. No JLA, Kevin McGuire, Batman, Punching Guy Gardner. Just, re just rewind oh, back. Oh, you have to watch the replay. <laughs> just, just rewind back a little bit into the show. Oh, Yeah, that we, we're not going to forget that one. Nope. All right, uh, and more of this so that uh, now we got salad here again. We're getting separation between the punch and the punchy. Is that if you look at that, is that Ernie it, Chan inking something? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but yeah. look at the guy getting hit. Like, there's the X right there. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, Sal is so good at that. Like, man, I as a kid, I can't. All the times that I stole, just you mean okay. Sal. Yes, I mean and just Sal. Yes, <laughs> I mean, Sal. Yeah. Sal loved to do that, but he loved this shot. I, now, I'm gonna, if I call myself out for this, I'm going to make my life life harder in my storyboards. But I think I still draw hands like Sal in that shot, like when oh, a yeah. hand is coming away, like what is coming away from you. He's the first person I think that I like that yep. helped me understand. Well, what does a hand look like when it's at that at angle? You know. I love that angle of a hand. <laughs> I draw it all the time too. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so again, so uh, dealing with these uh, more this, graceful but punching actions, we've got guy, little Mister Johnson here again from his drawing mm -hmm. fight scenes like a pro. That's a great shot. Wonderful action stuff going on. I mean, oh, wait, I, wait a minute. My I, my chin still here. my chin still hurts from posing from that one. But, um, <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, oh I like the I like the action on this one, Jeff. Right. So ba basically, the same concept, right? Like. Here's the arc, this one going this way. That's the punch. Yep. And then, so that line and this arc this way. So we have these intersecting arcs. And that's where 
So that causes the tension in the drawing, but also give us like you were talking about a little bit of distance. Yep. Shows that like that that punch. He's bigger in the foreground. Yeah. And look, Jeff did a little bit. Jeff's the right hand on that guy is a little bit of a Busema or you know some Busema. Like, look, there's no way of getting around. It's just kind of what the hand looks like from that angle. But but just yeah. the fact that like we've all we all grew up watching looking at Hulk. Some what I also like about this hold. choice for Jeff doing this action shot is that, um, though a little bit different, um, I think it's interesting because as an artist, when we're working on these pages and drawing these panels, and we've got to fit them in in the puzzle fashion that we have to do, panel one, panel three, all this different stuff, mm -hmm. this is nearly just a second choice from the other one that you picked before right, from a right. different angle. Mm -hmm. The action is very similar. It right, has well, a lot of a similar a... outcome. Yeah, but so this depending is... on the panel that you need, you right. could choose between these choices and then it would fit in your page. Well, that's one of the things I wanted to show was depending on where you decide. So the, the how you draw the, the punch, the drawing the X, drawing your lines of motion, those are all pretty basic. But here the camera is, is basically over here, right? Looking this way. And here, the so it's saying both of them. On and they're the evenly matched, the size of the character. And the camera is now behind this guy. So we automatically a different point of view and have a different relationship to the action. Very much so. Like this kind yeah. of deal. Ouch. Exactly. A little George Perez, everybody. Perez. So I mean, good. that's Look at that. their beautiful line of action there on uh, Old Man Superman. And then nice complimentary thing for the cape. It's just terrific. In a similar fashion, we have a nice. Uh, actually, they're fairly close together, but there is sort of a separation between the. That's a beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, even though some. I mean, some people would. Yeah, it's great. It's really just. There's a lot of great stuff going on with the lines of that one. Like, there's a line between the left arm and the right arm. There's a line from the you know from the head. Oh yeah. Head to the front of the knee on the, you know and then. The arc, uh, the arc on the skeleton's arms is great too, and on the cape and everything, it's tremendous. It's great. All right. Well, we can't have enough Sal. Yeah. Sure. So Man. again, we're doing that Sal shot, which is awesome, and a different pose than the other ones, but still, yeah. you know, super X fashion uh, shapes in there. And uh, Jack of Hearts knocking the Hulk. That's a big deal. <laughs> This is, why Jeff, this is why Jeff loves Jack of Hearts. I love. I do he, love Jack of Hearts. He's not just a masochist for drawing his vest. Yeah, everyone loves Jack of Hearts. I don't know who I, doesn't like Jack. Of Hearts. I never met a cool person that didn't. But in the lineup of all the cells we got, here's another one: oh. a different shot of Hulk punching. Although the guy Captain Marvel on top is a similar upside down figure to the other ones we had seen. But yeah. that, this is it's a that's a great SWAT. I mean, gang and the yep. arm. The energy and Hulk, the sweat. Yeah, Sal, he's underrated. He's got oh, Sal. Oh, absolutely. And Sal. that's a perfect thing because he had to do that backwards punch because he's cradling Jarella. Yeah, yeah. Sal, Sal had a lot of power. You know, he really, really had a lot of power. Not saying that uh, I can do this as well as Sal, but in a similar fashion, that's why I chose this kind of shot and one of the Wonder Woman issues I had done. Oh, yeah. Mm. And, and the, to me, the importance of this whole patch that I worked on wasn't Superman's pose. It was Wonder Woman's pose. I worked and worked and worked on that pose over and over again to try and get that separation, get the flow, get the right. whole big one on. Get That's the really, foreshortening, it's, foreshortening it's, of the leg is hard. Which, yep. it, well, it shows though, Scott, because I mean, the Superman drawing is a really great Superman drawing and it's consistent with everything we've just talked about, right? Like there's a great line of action from his back leg that we can't see through the punch. You're using the cape in a nice complimentary fashion. But, you know, Wonder Woman having to do her foreshortening and the lighting that you did, you know, where it's it came out really great. Thanks, man. All right, now some different ones. Oh, now we got Neil and again, oh, wait, like we were talking about with, with Jeff's, go ahead. Hey, just go take, show, take that off for a second and show my pose that I was just drawing. Hey. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Perfect timing. I was question. just, I was just thinking to show like the, the full <laughs> on upward swing from the foot down to the top, like how you, how you get the, the motion just over exaggerated. All like right, that. there you go. Yeah. Like that. That's it. That's like that. <laughs> that is so crazy. <laughs> That's me living in the future a little bit right there. There you go. Now perfect timing. Yeah. Um, but those, again, these are, are great, but they're also um, 
uh, flat to the camera a bit. They're the, the straight on kind of uh, shot pose. This one has a little more depth to it. Jim Aparo. Yeah. yeah. Great, great shot. He always was good with making people's hair get tossed about. There's a lot. Yep. That's just a great, like, whoosh. It's a really good. I love Jim Aparo. Really good dynamic action on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, just reading. <laughs> just a reading comment. the caption. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That is good. I missed that the whole time. <laughs> All right. So then um, I had shown this earlier in the week. Um, yeah, that's a great one. Uh, and yeah, I had a lot of fun on this. This was a, a really fun issue of Thor Blood Oath. But then Mr. Johnson, bless his little heart, did this to show you people. Yeah. Mm, nice. To show you exactly what I was trying to go for in this whole bit. And he he expressed that same thing. It's what you were talking about kind of before uh, Steve yeah. was the H. Jeff drew them both as plant people. Oh no, I see. Yes, it's the line of action. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's that? What's that strange, like microscopic fit creature that has like a weird squid head like that? But yeah, no, that that's that's a, tremendous. A, a tardigrade? Let's not look it up. It's not a tardigrade. The tardigrades look more evil. I got to draw them for a Scooby episode, but all right. That, I mean, that's. These are really hard, Scott, too, because you're purposely trying to really push your foreshortening, you know, like, oh, yeah, and, and trying to create as much coming at you as possible. You know, how far can I push it before it breaks mm. <laughs> in that so, same fashion? And we're going to run it with others. It's not uh, just my stuff. But damn. this was another one I showed. It's also very 3D. That was one of the fun things I was having in some of if I was given the room for this kind of a punch in a story. Mm -hmm. And again, Mr. Johnson was very nice here to um, draw. A, a diagram for us to show what I was doing, what the breakdown of my action and intention would it be with the whole uh, drawing here. Mm. Well, the, it's the it's it's the fundamentals of composition, or like it's all in figure drawing. It's all in the way you tell a story. Like it's you, all that stuff seems so casual, but like there's a lot of planning involved. Oh yeah, yeah, and then you know trying to fit pieces in and how they're going to work and how it works with this panel or the next panel or the next page or whatever going on. Yeah. It all gets very complex. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Again, showing for three D stuff now. Punches. We have some oh, other yeah. ones here. Yeah. Would have would have been rude to not show One Punch Man. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, um, I think I have a few. Where did they go? Oh, maybe. Oh, I'm not gonna find it now. Um, I did put a little bit of uh, manga stuff in here to make sure we got uh, the kinds of action in these books as well. Now this is that even a boxing book, so it's going to show a lot of that same kind of action. Um, this is Murakawa, and it's Ipo. I don't know the whole name, sorry. But it's great stuff. And again, uh, showing different things in here, how they can relate to the way that you want to tell the story. You can have the panel looking like this with all the multiple actions in it, mm -hmm. or... Um, in a similar fashion, I had to do it slightly different. Where is it? Here it is. That's for awesome. a cover, where also yeah. you have the multiple uh, attacks going on at the same time, uh, but then to a slightly different use. Although this other one, I guess, would have that could have still made it a good cover too. Uh, a couple more three D shots, actions going on, multiple actions in the panel. I loved the. The swings and the hits of this one, and also uh, the idea that um, similar to that Ali photo we were looking at, these are also misses. Yeah. Um, that would have, uh, you know, you can hear the whoosh as these punches keep going by. But then to show another one where they crack, bam, you feel the power of this hit oh, really. Yeah, hard. look at that splatter. Woo! And even the speed and the shadow. Yeah, it's the special effects of action are, are incredible in manga. They can re really, uh, they can add so much to what's going on with the punch, depending on uh, how small or how big it is. That's one of the other aspects I wanted to get to, like Mr. Davis again here. Oh yeah, this was a great shot that uh, Jeff picked. Not only is there the really strong X of the punch and that kind of stuff, but we have literally the earth cracking and everything breaking around it. Yeah, which is another hallmark of uh, classic fun superhero comic books. Total fun stuff. I mean, that one's crazy. Yeah, the effects of the punch are are almost as important as the punch sometimes. 
Yeah, especially in superhero comic books. I mean, this is the other half of it, like the Guy Gardner punch, where half of that impact was really just Guy's face that McGuire drew. Here, you know, half of the impact of these is the ramifications of the punch upon the background or whatever else is going on. Scott, can you uh, cut to my camera for a second? Oh, that's a Oh, yeah, absolutely. One. All right, I don't know if this is going to come out. We'll see. This. Put you over here. There. Yes, sir. So we should do some me drawing action. Yay! There it is. So it's not a punch, but we have reaching forward. We have a little hit thrust, hit throw. Mm -hmm. We have him coming in one direction and then leaving in another. Absolutely. And that panel four has great separation. Yeah, that's nice. And an expose uh, involved with the action as well. It goes at an angle. So, I can draw two kids. That's great. <laughs> cool, Jonesy. <laughs> All right, Thanks, where are we now? I oh, was, uh, yes, some more impact shots. Oof, oh, that's good. And the figure itself is an X. I mean, it's it's yep. if you just start with the simplest of shapes and build up for those, then even when you have a complex drawing, that underlying structure comes through. Yep. And in all these action shots, um, it still pays off with that X fashion, even if here you don't necessarily see the punch. Mm -hmm. uh. um, you can still feel the action of everybody punching in there in the lines that are being drawn and the shapes being drawn and the X fashion of all their shapes and stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah. So Kirby was a master of those group shots of all that action going on. Yeah. There's no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, yeah just Omax line of action is so strong and then everyone else you know is just being carried along like ah absolutely god look at that that's so good yeah absolutely freaking lutely um oh that's not the one i want um there was another kind that i wanted to show throughout all these there's a punch that happens with a bunch of these that actually i couldn't find as many great ones as i wanted where the punch is happening but it's in the foreground and the person is getting, you know, knocked into orbit or knocked into the mm -hmm. kind of thing, which is another classic shot of uh, really good comic books. So you have the ones where um, it's affecting the, you know, <laughs> building or whatever around. Now this one actually thing is getting thrown in that third panel. And that's the, uh, the real reason I got this page, but it's still, it could have been a punch. Yeah. And then the idea is, you know, thing is actually going flying into the, you know, FF building in the distance. And I really love it when they actually draw the lines of motion. I mean, it's yeah. they're always indicated, they're always hinted at, but I, I just like seeing them. It, it yeah. makes it seem so uh, fluid to me. Yeah, and it's just that clear way of telling the story. At a glance, you know exactly what's going on with it. You don't have to wonder. The, the caption boxes don't have to explain it to you. Mm -hmm. You know, all those things going on. Uh, you can just feel that air. You can also, this one, you don't see the punch necessarily, but you see the effects of the punch. And again, you know, it's that space effect of the punch that it's such a greater effect um, that makes it that much more powerful of a punch. Oh, yeah. Uh, then I think we have more of uh, the background or different things being affected by punches. And here, Hulk's punching through the wall. Mm -hmm. breaking into the panel, breaking into the cover. There's the rebar this, and the steel, right? This, this is one of my way. favorite Kirby Hulk covers ever. I love this one. And it's what you were talking about before, Jeff, with like that wall feels real. It mm -hmm. really feels like he broke the metal of the cage and the mm -hmm. stones are flying and all that kind love of stuff. Love it, love it, love it. That's, yeah. I mean, I love, I love this era of Kirby when he's not quite at the level that we all think of him as. And Chick Stone inked a lot of this particular era, and I find it just so charming. Um, yep. There's like a slight coloring book aspect to it, but it's but uh, there's just like a really fun, chunky. I always think like Mike Allred is trying yeah, to do yeah. this era of um, of uh, of Kirby and and inking and stuff. And I feel Absolutely. like. Uh, I know Bruce Timms, one of his nicknames for Darwin Cook used to be uh, Chick, you know, because he thought Darwin's uh, inking style was kind of like Chick Stone. So <laughs> I, I love this era. Love this era. Uh, similar, another impact shot here of uh, John Buscema is giant man or uh, um, Goliath is punching a building. He's punching uh, yeah. a wall. And to see the effect on it, even though technically we don't even kind of see the punch, it disappears in the special effect. 
but I thought it was a different kind of punch, and it's interesting to show the different kinds and how it they. It looks. It looks the way it looks like a fighter punching a punching bag. You know. Absolutely. Which I'm sure he had seen and referenced, or had photos of around, and and looked at all that stuff. I don't doubt. I'm sure. Here's another one of Hulk then punching through a door. Gary Frank. Yep. And this would kind of be sort of an X fashion, but also the the H uh, framing of it that you were talking about before, Jones. Hmm. Again, here is the punch, and it's affecting the ground around here, which affects the rest of the panels around there. All the boxes and the walls and everything else are being affected. All the people are being affected by the punch, um, which in and of itself has that uh, finalized uh, target impact. It doesn't punch through. It stops at that one part. Wham. And then with the, the impact that you can have of all these things, I love this kind of stuff that Byrne was doing in uh, FF at this time. Mm -hmm. um, I think Perez did a bunch of this kind of stuff too, where in the middle panel he gets punched, but the real fun of the page is the third panel here, where mm -hmm. things going plow, 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 <laughs> through wall or floor after floor after floor. Okay. Uh, and then Byrne did that again here with this one. A um, little bit of a weird cockeyed angle and whatnot, and some of it I don't think was... 100% uh, effective with the cars that you don't quite understand the cars sometimes, but it's still a great idea. Um, well, and, great and I think it's, you feel like with Byrne at a certain point, it's like he's starting to just play with, he's like, he's done so many things a million times. It's like, what can I try? It may not even work, but what can I try that is just something I've never seen before, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, I think I've just about gone through... Yes, Bill, I think he was, uh, Embellisher was uh, his listing on the um, John Buscema stuff. All right. Um, yeah, then what I have are those uh, manga shots that I have left that I think we've seen. Um, oh, uh, right at the beginning, I forgot, but it fits in with affecting the background and thing around him. We have a wonderful shot here of She-Hulk. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. And it makes, I'm assuming this is a cover shot. It seems like it's uh, set up to be a cover shot because it's really pretty for her. It's a beautiful shot. It's a nice angle. Her being uh, very powerful and expressive that way. Um, you can see um, her costume, her S, I guess, <laughs> that she has on her shirt there. Um, but it, you know, it works really well. It's a really nice shot. But she's affecting her thing. She's definitely not coming off like someone who is not powerful. She's got all the power that she needs. She's got the power. Yeah. And then there were just a couple more photos here I had of boxing stuff. Ouch, nice. Just really like nice movement and action. Well, if you really want to if you want to learn how to draw comics, you gotta draw from life. Yep. You never forget where this stuff comes from. I, I mean, again with comic books, we try and extrapolate and push a little farther or maybe more dynamic if you can to make sure that it transfers to the reader um, as much as possible. But paying attention to all these different kind of shots Oof. tells the story oh yeah i mean that spray of sweat uh almost looks like the uh the manga one mm, absolutely earlier. yep boom 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 this is a great one look at that one sugar ray oh, sugar ray God. yeah <laughs> Just the X in his body, I mean, how he's crossing over the weight from his back knee up through his head, and but then the, the weight on the forward leg. It's amazing. And pushing off that, yeah, pushing off that back leg, all that power driving. Yeah. Yep. And then landing on his front foot. Mm. Pow. And front, guy, front guys, both of his legs braced to just be trying to absorb that impact and keep him on his feet. I was about to say, to not fall down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good solid base. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen. I think we went through pretty much all the ones that I had. This was a fun all episode. Right. Yeah, well, good, good job with all this stuff. Protect your chin if you, if we if we hope you've learned anything from this episode. Well, keep I mean, your, see, keep your dukes what these, up. yeah, one of the things you learn when you first start sparring and stuff is that uh, get your hands up. Oof, that's a good. Well, one. that's a nice one, Jeff. Thanks. Yeah, I just saw it like that's right. Oh, yeah. double fisting. Great, great, yeah. great, 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 <laughs> great anatomical uh, 
it's tough there too, Jeff, with the deltoids and the way you got the trapezius muscles, uh, you know, colliding with each other. It's really good. Study, study your, study your anatomy, fellas. Study your Agrippa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a lot of fun, guys. That was a great show. Um, as always, the all of our contact information is in the description box below. So follow us, subscribe, and like, and then. Join us next Look at him week. Go. Now he's got to do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was the one thing, actually, that I only just remembered before we started the show. I was like, oh, shoot, if we'd had some of our photos from the studio again. Oh, I didn't even think about that. The angle of the different stuff we were doing with those photos. Well, I mean, so again, remind me for next time. Because I know that we want to – I also think it would be fun to do with, like, kicks and, you know, yep. all kinds of the action aspects of drawing a comic and animation. They're, each one of them has their own little tricks. And I I do, Jones, I can pull out a lot of those. Uh, I mean, it would be, as long as I get, as long as I get some editorial approval of my shirt response. <laughs> of course. I, but I do think it would be, in addition to just doing one episode that was maybe just an ode to using, using photo reference, I feel like the best way to do that would be to celebrate B Blood Wolf Supreme. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got to dig those out, yeah. And, and oh. even, do, even do photo to, you know, just... Because that could be an interesting episode just about discussing, like, how to properly use photo reference, you know, yeah. how to use it as an inspiration. Um, uh, and uh, and it would be, fun, you know, it would be fun in that case because, A, we are the models. And, yep. right. yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. I'll have to dig those up and see if we can't find the appropriate panels and the, uh, and the, <laughs> the corresponding pictures. And let's just definitely lose the inappropriate panels, I think. Oh, a hundred percent. We have enough gentlemen. of those. All right, gentlemen. It was really great to see We've you. Knock down another one. Gentlemen. Yay. It's evil. All right. Let me put in the final frame. Thank you, Scott. Bring it, Jonesy. All right, everybody. We will see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Toodaloo.